Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to St Matthew's Online Worship. My name is Matt and I'm the vicar of St Matthew's Church and we're delighted to have you with us. We hope you find this time really helpful. Our prayer is that as we share this time together, you will become aware of God's presence with you wherever you are, wherever you're watching right now. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship together. to 
God, our judge and saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, for whom every family in heaven on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who live in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with powers from on high. We believe in God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus spoke to them again, again in the parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle, cattle has been, have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, other to his business. The rest seized his servants ill, ill-treated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. The king told the attendants to tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness. Where, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Good morning, Chet. It's really great to be able to share with you this morning. And we are continuing in Matthew, um, and we've been spending a while going through the book of Matthew and looking at loads of parables, which are stories that Jesus told. And we're in Matthew 22 this morning, as we've just heard, and we're in the throes of Holy Week, um, we normally look at that around Easter time and things are really hotting up for Jesus. This is when sort of everything, the rubble was hitting the road for him and he was really close to um, being crucified and his resurrection. And he was still talking through parables. He was still speaking of the kingdom and, and what the kingdom of God was like. It was such a priority for Jesus, for his disciples to know what the kingdom was going to look like. And um, this story we've heard is about a wedding banquet. And I don't know about you, but the parable throws up a couple of questions for me, um, quite big questions. Um, and we're gonna look at two of those this morning. Firstly, why on earth would people refuse a wedding invitation? Um, and then secondly, why did a guy get thrown out on account of his dress sense? So let's start with the first question. Why would people refuse a wedding invitation? I don't know about you, but I would give anything um, for a party. Um, I love a party and having had to postpone my own wedding party this year, I cannot understand why anybody would want to postpone a or turn down an invitation to a party. And it's really easy to read this and think, why would people refuse an invitation? What could possibly be more important than the king's son, son's wedding? And yet, as we step back from this literal meaning of the parable, we realise that this, what Jesus is trying to say, is that this is speaking of an invitation to come and spend time with the king and his son. It's an invitation for an encounter with God. It's an invitation to a joyous celebration with the king. And I wonder if that maybe feels easier to resonate with. 
You see, given the lack of social media and technology, when the food was ready at the party, and they would have sent out an invitation to let people know what it was, but then they would have gone for a second invitation to say, it's on right now, drop what you have and, and come and join us at the party. There wasn't necessarily a fixed time, but people were expected to respond and go as soon as the messengers came. And I think, and it's at that moment we see this sort of refusal of um, people's attendance to the party. And we, we see the refusal in two ways. One is an apathy, sort of we're not bothered. Um, and the second was a difference in priority. And when the people were told it's ready, come now to the party, we see these two things happen. This apathy towards the invitation, a guy says, actually, I've got my field to attend to. I'm not interested. Maybe when we get that nudge of the spirit to, to go and spend some intentional time with God or maybe to get in touch with someone from our church family or to maybe think and respond to this new way of being church right now, to spend some time with that, how easy is it for our response to be, actually, there's hard work. It's hard work to think about that. Or I can't sing in church right now, so I'm just not interested in thinking about it. Or it's really different to what it was and why can't I just go back to normal? Actually, I'll just... I'll just ignore it. Does any of that sound familiar? I know it does for me. An apathy to the invitation from God. And the second thing that happens is a difference in priority. The other guy goes to his business. His priority is money and profit. It doesn't matter whether the king wants to bless him or not. His priority is his business and it's not the party. As the last six months has shifted our weekly rhythms and our routines, we've been forced to adapt and walk through a recession. And, and I wonder how the worth of, and the worry of money and practical provision and filling our time has been taken over so that now there's no space to respond to the King's invitation. Suddenly, I don't feel so confused as to why people refuse the invitation to the party in this story, because I can see what Jesus is trying to get at. He's trying to say to us, are, are you coming to the party? What's your response to his invitation? We'll come back to that in a moment. And the second huge question is, why was a guy's dress sense so important? There's such a brutal response to the fact that this guy is wearing the wrong clothes. The king went out of its way, it says, to invite the good and the bad. So what was he expecting? That everyone would have the best clothes? Isn't it a bit much to expect everyone to have wedding attire? Well, again, another important contextual thing to notice is that it was custom at Jewish weddings for the host to provide garments for guests to wear. Um, the provision was there. That's what the host and that's what the culture would have done at the time. And so what had happened is this man had ignored the provision of the host. And when you start to lean in to the story, we realise it's, it's a huge act of grace and generosity by the king to even hold the party in the first place, to, to be willing to invite everybody from the street corners, from the good, the bad. It's, it's a massive display of grace and generosity and provision. The king didn't have to, but he chose to extend the invitation. He chose to, to extend that beyond the, the norm and to invite everybody. And in response to that grace and provision, someone still didn't choose to respect or honour the king. This man shows a sense of apathy to the situation of not really caring or understanding the gravitas of even being able to be at the party. So it wasn't really about the dress sense, but in this parable, the mystery is about the heart, about the attitude of behind how he was at the party. And so I guess these two things now leave us with two questions for ourselves. The first is, are we at the party? And the second is, if we are, how are we at the party? Let me unpack those a little bit for us. So let's start with the first one. Are we at the party? And I don't mean this in a, have we responded to Jesus one time? Would we call ourselves a Christian? I think it's a deeper question than that right now. Are we showing up to God's invitation in our everyday, in this moment? It's so phenomenally easy for our lives to get busy or full. Have we, have we responded to, to God's invitation to be 
with us, for his presence to be known, for us to be aware of what he's up to, even if that's just being with us in the mess right now? Are we living with our with our lives, with God at the centre? Are we directing our passion and our priority towards God? Now more than ever, it's such a vital time to choose to respond to God's invitation, to be active, not to let other things become the priority, but to say, okay, God, you're coming first. I'm going to be, I'm not going to be apathetic, but I'm going to be passionate. I'm not going to be and distracted I'm gonna have you as priority and let all the other things flow from my response to that invitation after all it's a party it's a party that that Jesus is inviting us to why is it that he uses a wedding banquet in this story well it's a reflection of of what's to come of the the tradition and the narrative that that one day there will be a great banquet But I think there's also just a real sense of reminding us that there is joy and hope to be found as we meet and commune with God. As we refuse the invitation, if we choose to do that, we actually miss out on so much that the King has for us, so many blessings the King has to offer. And at the moment, um, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm really holding this tension between the the sheer trauma and heartache of this year but also the joys of it. Actually, both can exist at the same time. And and if we refuse to engage with with gratitude and with blessings and with the joyful things, we miss out on so much. And, And from my experience, life becomes a lot harder if we refuse to enter into the blessings and the joy that God might be trying to bring to us in the midst of such difficult situations. And the second question is, if we are at the party, how are we there? How are we? How is our heart? We might have responded to God's invitation, but God really cares about how we are as we're engaging with him. God cares about the state of our hearts and how we're doing. That's not to say that we need to have it all together, but he wants us to engage with him. I can imagine um, when I picture this guy not in his wedding clothes, I can imagine him just not being bothered. That's the general gist of of what I get, that he just isn't interested, that he doesn't want to step up, he doesn't want to engage with the occasion. And for us, we might have a real sense of like, oh, but God, I'm on my knees, I don't have anything. And God's not saying, I don't think in this parable, that we have to have it all together. He's just saying, would you show me? Would you be present? Would you engage? Would you remember my grace? Don't forget that this party was extravagant and full of grace that for us even to be able to commune with God for us to even be able to be in a relationship with him came at huge cost for Jesus and and there's grace in that there's an amazing thing to receive and if we just treat it with like oh yeah I'm a Christian or I get to pray so so much of that apathy can just steal the joy and honor it is to be at the party And yes, this year has been unbelievably tough, but let's not forget that God's love and grace extends to us. He has invited us, even though we may not feel like we deserve it. He's invited us to be part of his kingdom, to have hope, to be able to to cling to hope and to experience hope in amongst um, real destruction, to, to experience peace in amongst a real storm. What a privilege that is. And and maybe this morning we just want to look at ourselves and say, how am I at the party? Have I have I slipped into, you know, a, an apathy or a, or a not botheredness? Maybe we just need to encourage our hearts and say, wow, what did it, what did it cost Jesus? What, what an amazing thing it is to be able to receive God's love and to experience that. And, and not to be down on ourselves, but to, to give glory to God and to say, Wow, I want to honour God. Wow, I want to engage with him because that is where life is. My guess is that the guy at the party without the clothes on wasn't really experiencing all that he could have experienced at that party because he wasn't there, he wasn't present. He, He hadn't put himself fully in that place. And more practically, maybe that looks like, you know, where are we 
where are we serving with one another? I know that's super difficult right now in the physical, but where are we communing with each other? Where are we not being passive and sitting back and thinking someone else will do that? Or maybe that it would be great if that happened, but I, I don't want, I can't, you know, I can't be bothered to help that. Where are we chivying ourselves and asking God and saying, where can I be part of this? Where can I engage so that, so that we can receive all of the joy that God has for us? So just want to leave you with two questions, really. Are you at the party? Have you responded to God's invitation to you to come and be part of something? Not to sit on the sidelines, but to be involved with a family all across the world who worship him. A family whose very essence is that we have hope and peace and access to divine you know, the source of divine creation and love. Have you responded to that? And secondly, if you have, then how are you? How are you at that party? Are you present and and there and honouring God and, and getting excited and having our eyes open and being present to what he has? Or have you slipped into an apathetic nature of not really being bothered? Maybe you need to remind yourself this morning, maybe we all need to remind ourselves of how incredible God's love is, that we get to be recipients of that through Jesus. I'm aware that it's not a particularly light message this morning. I've really wrestled with preaching this this week because I think it's it's tough and Jesus doesn't beat about the bush with this parable. He really is challenging. You know, there were consequences to the people who turned the invitation away and and the man who, who didn't engage. And do you know what the biggest consequence was? That they missed out. That they missed out on the party, that they missed out on the joy and the peace and the involvement of that celebration. Would you respond to God's invitation this morning? Shall we just wait and and see what God has to say to us as we as we meditate on this and as we hear what God has for us. Come Holy Spirit. Jesus, thank you that your word is like a double-edged sword, that it is, um, it's not always nice and fluffy, but it's challenging and encouraging and really wants us to find life in all its fullness. And God, as we think about these two questions, whether we think about, as we think about our response to the party and as we, th we think about that, that response to your invitation to to engage with what you're up to to be aware of your presence would you come and blow out those you know blow away the cobwebs of our apathy of our apathy and and open our eyes to see where where we can be part of what's going on especially at this time where that is so different to what we're used to god would you help us to see Lord, I pray that we wouldn't feel like we were missing out, but we would be able to respond and engage, to fully experience your joy and your peace. Thank you, God, that you're faithful, that your promises are true and that you are so present with us. But you ask us to respond. You ask us to, to, to be active in our pursuit of you. So come, Spirit, and help us to to know what that looks like for us right now. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh!
together now. Let's pray. Father, we pray for our nation, that as we continue to respond to coronavirus, God, would you, would you guide our leaders? We pray for, for the government, for all those um, local councillors, in all the decisions that they that have to take right now, that affect the lives of so many people, God, would you give them wisdom and insight? Would you help them to see the things that, that are most important? Of all the information that they are able to, to have sight of, would you help them to see what is most important and to make good decisions for the benefit of all? Father, we, we pray for, um, for businesses as the furlough scheme uh, draws towards a close. Father, we, we pray for all those whose, whose jobs are at risk, those managers and executives who, who have difficult decisions to make in the coming weeks. We pray for those who've already found themselves out of work and, and pray that you will bless them in their search for new employment, that you will sustain them and provide for them uh, in this period of time. Father, we pray too for those uh, known to us right now who are sick or suffering in, in any way. In a moment of quiet, why don't you just um, pray for the people you know of who are ill or struggling in some way at the moment and pray God's healing and blessing over them. So, Father, we pray for your peace, your healing, your comfort to be with all those who are struggling right now. Lord, we give you thanks for, uh, for last weekend as we, as we had the great give and, and celebrated harvest. Lord, we thank you again for all the good gifts that we enjoy, for, for food to eat and for uh, roof, uh, a roof over our heads. Lord, we thank you for, for our warm beds and for all the things that we have around us. And Lord, we continue to pray for those who go without. We ask your continued blessing on the well, our local food bank. Father, we ask your continued blessing on the Good Shepherd Ministries in all the work they do with vulnerable people. Jesus, we pray for each a person in this city who today is at, is at risk of going without food. And we ask, Lord, that you will join the dots and enable them to access the provision that is available. Looking ahead to next week, we pray for St Matthews, we pray for our annual meetings, that as they take place, Lord, that we would... Um, 
yeah, we'd be able to celebrate all that you have done in the last 12 to 18 months, but we would also be able to look forward, filled with faith as to what comes next. Jesus, we, we pray that as we, uh, as we announce what the, the values are going to be that we want to adopt and to live by, Lord, that we would be excited about that, that prospect of seeking to be um, kingdom people together. And so to finish our, our prayer time today, I want to just encourage us to, to pray now for, for our own streets, for our own neighbours, to just pray God's blessing over the people that we live among. And so let's do that now. Let's pray for our streets. Father, we pray now for the roads and the streets that we live on. We pray your blessing over our neighbours. We pray for opportunities to bless them and to demonstrate your good news and your love for them in the coming week, that they too might come to see uh, your goodness for themselves. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So some important news um, to, uh, to make sure you've got hold of. Uh, next Sunday is our annual meeting, and we want to encourage as many of you as possible to come and join us for that. Uh, so next Sunday, we will have a nine o'clock communion service, as we have been having in the building. And then at 10 o'clock, uh, we'll have the annual meeting uh, in the building. And we would encourage you, if you can, come and join us in person to do that. And um, if you can't, for whatever reason, uh, you are able to join the annual meeting on Zoom as well. And as part of the meeting, we're going to be announcing a set of values that we are going to be uh, adopting as a church and seeking to live out in all that we do. And we're really excited by these and we think they're going to shape our life together. Uh, so if you want to find out more about those, you want to hear what those values are, come and join us for the annual meeting, 10 o'clock next Sunday, 18th of October. Uh, the following Sunday, the 25th of October, also really exciting. We're going to be relaunching the 1030 service in the building. And so we're going to, um, the way that's going to work, we're going to keep the nine o'clock communion service um, just like we have been. Um, but at 10.30, we're then going to hold another service in the building um, like uh, this one that we've been having online together. So this is going to move into the building. The band have been practicing, ready to lead us in the musical parts of our worship. And we're just really looking forward to getting back uh, together to worship in that way. Now, for those of you who can only join us online, don't worry. Um, rather than pre-recording this to put it out separately, um, when we've moved back into the building on the 25th, we're hoping to live stream what is happening in the building for you uh, onto YouTube at 10.30. So we're, we're going to switch um, simply just to YouTube, but we'll make sure there's a link on Facebook as well for you to find it really easily. So yeah, really excited to be relaunching the 10.30 service on the 25th of October. Uh, and then also do look out in the bulletin and on our Facebook page for details of a couple of things going on at the end of the month um, where um, we would normally be holding a light party and we're doing something equivalent to that. It's going to be different this year, but look out for the details. And similarly for, for All Souls, um, just at the beginning of November, we want to offer a space for people to remember loved ones who are no longer with us. Uh, so do look out for details of that, um, a special service and some other ways that you can do that with us online as well.
pray God's blessing over us as we finish our time together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen.